Thrustmaster T300 RS. Thrustmaster TH8 A shifter. Thrustmaster T3 PA pedals. Janky drift T300 drift saddles. All right, enough of that. If you didn't quite understand the vibe there, you know, ask your parents or maybe don't. Since starting this channel, I've had a ton of people ask me what my settings are for my wheel, so that's what we're gonna cover in this video. I'll also be covering my settings for the T3PA pedals, including what I use to make the brake pedal feel more realistic. I think a lot of people overcomplicate this, especially when first starting out, so as requested, here are the settings that I use to go from sim drifting to real life. I'm gonna treat this like you're brand new. So first you click the Windows Start menu and scroll down until you find the Thrustmaster folder. From there, you click the control panel link, and I believe this is automatically installed with the drivers for the wheel, but if not, you could probably find it on their website. And you can see a few different devices installed here, including my handbrake, my pedal set, the Thrustmaster T300, and my gear shifter. We're gonna start by clicking on the wheel and going into properties, and here you can see my angle of rotation is set to 900, and then my pedals are set to separate. There's not a ton to do on this tab, but if you're having any problems with your wheel, here's where you can and should make sure that your drivers are updated. And from there, let's go into the gain settings. I think this is where a lot of you are gonna be surprised, because pretty much every other video I've come across has recommended turning off either spring, damper, or both. I can tell you that I tried pretty much every combination for the sake of this video, and none of them completely changed the driving experience or prevented me from linking the track. But overall, as you can tell, these are basically the factory settings for the wheel. The only thing I did was increase the force feedback from 75 to 90 because I installed a larger diameter wheel, which makes the force feedback feel more weak. And on that bombshell, let's move on to Content Manager. Starting on the force feedback tab, I couldn't find anywhere to revert back to default, but I'm pretty sure these are all basically just the stock settings with some small variations. And you might be starting to sense a theme here. Leaving this up for another second or two in case you want to pause, and onto the axis tab. Here again, I've got the angle set to 900, as well as the gamma set to 1, and I mainly wanted to show this tab for that and my brake settings. For the brake, you'll notice that I have the endpoint moved up, and this is something you may need to do if you have a brake mod installed. In my case, I had the endpoint set to 90%, and the gamma set to 2.4, which was a decent feel. And as far as my actual brake pedal mod, I absolutely hate the cone-shaped ones because you basically just lose half the brake pedal as opposed to getting a more progressive feeling. I found a tip where people were sticking a squash ball behind their brake pedal, so I gave that a shot and actually really wound up liking it. Basically, you just uninstall the cone and then jam the squash ball in between the bracket for that and the back of the pedal and I think it actually gives it a pretty good feel. But getting back to the moral of the story here, and I'm gonna flash through all the settings screens one last time to give you another chance to pause. But basically, at least with the T300, you could pretty much run this wheel out of the box on default settings. I've seen a lot of strong opinions about the individual settings and why the defaults suck for one reason or another. But as someone who didn't mess around too much with settings and still managed to successfully jump from sim drifting to the real thing, I would very much say that people make this a bigger deal than it actually is. Now, I know I didn't drop anything revolutionary in this episode, but I hope this is still helpful in some way or another. I mean, if you're struggling and that's why you're watching this video, it could be a wheel issue, but the likelihood is that you just need some more seat time. And if you're just looking for the most, you know, realistic settings, these are what I personally use. As always, hit me up with any questions, because as evident from this episode, I do eventually get around to answering them. Please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Thrustmaster.